Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's head outside, take a look outside our weather window. And yes, there is blue sky above all of these clouds. This is the shot from our Billy Goat Sky Fi Tower camera up in Okanagan County. Beautiful blue sky above this low cloud deck. Meanwhile, below it, yeah, the Wenatchee Valley and also folks in Pateras and Brewster experience this as well. Just those low clouds, kind of dreary weather once again for our Wednesday. And as we get you into Thursday, we've been seeing some stagnant calm air and it's going to get a little bit breezy for some locations on Thursday. We'll see some pretty chilly morning temperatures and then windy conditions, especially in the Moses Lake area and parts of the Columbia Basin. Moving into our Thanksgiving week next week, it's going to be some changes for us weather wise. We'll see those cold temperatures on Monday and Tuesday, maybe some snow flurries and then Wednesday right through the weekend periods of rain mixed with snow, some breezy conditions and a little bit warmer. And we'll have all those details coming up for you a little bit later in your weather forecast. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. We'll have the latest numbers in the race for Chelan County Commissioner and County Clerk. The county's Board of Commissioners said yesterday that they've selected Alan Blackman to fill the seat being left by Judge Kyle Mott and the Waterville Town Council member accused of fleeing from police and witness tampering won't face trial until the new year. But first, our top story tonight, for the first time in a dozen years, Chelan County will have a new sheriff. Deputy Mike Morrison has held the lead since election night over incumbent Sheriff Brian Burnett. Last night, the latest vote total showed Morrison holding his 54% advantage with no room for Burnett to close that gap. After last night's tally, Morrison spoke with NCW Life about a successful campaign. We knew it was going to be a tall task. A lot of people said that your work was going to be cut out for you, and we, uh, we accepted that challenge and said we're going to do what needs to be done to win. We're going to deliver our message, and ultimately we knew it was going to be up to the voters to decide if uh, what we were looking at for change for our county was what they were looking for. I just want to make sure that the county knows that we're going to work together, that everyone is going to be treated with fairness and respect, and that the divisions have to go out the window. I mean, politics have clouded law enforcement for too long, and law enforcement should be pretty simple, and that's just serving the community. Uh, one last thing I just want to say, I'm thankful for the community for supporting me and for my campaign team for coming out and putting in the amount of work they did, and for my family just for being patient over the last couple months and allowing me to be shared with the community as we took on this challenge. Morrison accused Burnett of damaging morale in the Sheriff's Department and contributing to high turnover. After 12 years in office, Burnett must now make way for his former deputy. The outgoing sheriff told NCW Life he'll work toward a smooth transition, but he had harsh words about the challenger who unseated him. For me personally, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting time um, because I do know this is the next chapter. I always take things as when one door closes, and, and, and this is based off of my faith, is I believe that God's going to open another door. Um, and if it's his will, then it's going to be even better than the one I've been playing, right? I think a lot of people took uh, for granted, um, you know, hey, you've got so much public support. Um, you've got this in the bag. And I was like, no, we need people on the ground. We need people to go talk to people and do things. Um, I think that would have been that uh, I can tell you beyond a shadow of doubt, and I'm going I'm to speak this with boldness. I have respect for the position of sheriff. I have zero respect for Mike Morrison and what he said it did and the lies that he cast upon myself and my, and my administration. So I will do what's right because it's right for our office in the county, but it's not for having anything to do with Mike Morrison. And I'll double down on it again. I have zero respect for him. Burnett says he's unlikely to re return to his commission service rank under Morrison's administration. He said he may seek a job in the private sector. Well, other races around the county are all but finished, even if they wound up in narrow territory. For Chelan County Commissioner Sean Smith of Kashmir finished last night with a 378-vote lead over Han Ann Hesburgh of Leavenworth. 
Only 233 uncounted ballots remain from this election, meaning the Republican Smith is likely to end up replacing Bob Bugert as County Commissioner for District 2. Neither candidate has declared victory in that race as of yet. Meanwhile, in the race for Chelan County Clerk, current Deputy Clerk Sandra Arachiga is still running behind DSHS Program Specialist Marty Young. The office manages all the records filed with the Superior Court System. Young, who's also secretary for the Chelan County Republican Party, holds a margin of more than 500 votes over Arachiga, who ran as an independent. Finally, the outcome for district court judge appears solid. John Volan will take the seat being left by retiring judge Roy Four. The private practice attorney outpaced deputy prosecutor Alan Blackman for that position. The final ballot count is expected to, play, to take place next Tuesday. The election must be certified by November 29th. Well, the runner-up in that race for Chelan County District Court will still have a judgeship starting later this year. The county's Board of Commissioners said yesterday they've selected Alan Blackman to fill the seat being left by Judge Kyle Mott, who will depart from the bench effective December 5th. Commissioners expect to finalize the appointment with a vote on Monday. Blackman has spent 26 years as a Chelan County Deputy Prosecutor, largely managing juvenile cases. District Court judges hear traffic infractions, misdemeanor cases, and small dollar civil lawsuits. Well, in other news, the Waterville Town Council member accused of fleeing from police and witness tampering won't face trial until the new year. 34-year-old Cody Pregshot was arraigned on the two felony charges on Monday, as well as a gross misdemeanor charge of making a false statement to police. His next hearing isn't scheduled until January, when his, final, his trial date rather will be set in Douglas County Superior Court. Pregshot allegedly drove away from a sheriff's deputy's attempt at a traffic stop back in October and then told investigators he wasn't in Douglas County at the time and convinced a potential witness to lie on his behalf. He's been a council member in Waterville since 2019. Prosecutors also moved to exclude Douglas County Superior Court Judge Brian Huber from hearing the case. That means Preg Schott will have to appear before a visiting judge or court commissioner. Well, when we come back, an unoccupied mobile home in Moses Lake was destroyed by fire late last night. A state burn ban is now in effect for most of North Central Washington. The Washington State Tree Fruit Association's annual convention will return to Wenatchee in December and feature a keynote address from NFL Hall of Famer and former Congressman Steve Largent. And Dusty's In-N-Out Restaurant on North Wenatchee Avenue, is, uh, which was closed abruptly in late October, will soon reopen under new ownership. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Camp Zuniga, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Zuniga's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Zuniga today, www.campfirencw.org.
Welcome back. In another news, an unoccupied mobile home in Moses Lake was destroyed by fire late last night. The Grant County Fire Marshal's Office said the cause of the fire remains under investigation, but the double-wide mobile home was apparently unoccupied for years. The fire was in the 4400 block of Jackie Drive, just north of the Home Depot. The home uh, was fully engulfed by the time Grant County Fire District 5 firefighters arrived and is a total loss. Well, a state burn ban is now in effect for most of north central Washington. The Department of Ecology announced on Tuesday a stage one burn ban for Chelan, Douglas, Okanagan, and Kittitas counties. The restriction means no outdoor burning in those counties, including agricultural burning. It also means no fires in uncertified wood stoves unless it's a household's only source of heat. The ban is attributed to air stagnation, which can keep smoke close to the ground and contribute to human health issues. Restrictions could change with the weather. Ecology reass reassesses air quality conditions almost daily. Well, the Washington State Tree Fruit Association's annual convention will return to Wenatchee in December and feature a keynote address from NFL Hall of Famer and former Congressman Steve Largent. The Northwest Hort Expo will be December 5th through December 7th at the Wenatchee Convention Center and is designed to address the latest trends, challenges, and hot topics within the tree fruit industry. Largent, a former Seattle Seahawks wide receiver, will speak during the opening day about his experiences in sports and politics and how it's possible for rivals to work together to achieve a common goal. The Tree Fruit Association said the expo will be expanded to accommodate more vendors at both the Wenatchee Convention Center and Town Toyota Center. Well, Dusty's In-N-Out Restaurant on North Wenatchee Avenue in Wenatchee, which closed abruptly in late October, will soon reopen under new ownership. The owners of the Wild Huckleberry family of restaurants announced on, announced on social media that they will take over the operation of Dusty's. The new ownership's current restaurants include the Wild Huckleberry on South Mission Street in Wenatchee, the Huck in Pibus Public Market, and the Big Y Cafe near Peshaston. Owners Eric and Angie Decker have not yet announced if there will be different menu options when Dusty does reopen. Dusty's In-N-Out is one of Wenatchee's oldest restaurants. It was opened in 1949 by Betty and R.L. Dusty Rhodes. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, Wenatchee Valley's mayors and housing officials spent this morning at Pibus Public Market where they took part in a discussion on homelessness with the Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce. The city of Wenatchee is now hosting two safe park spaces for homeless people living in their vehicles, but there's more to be done. Much of the focus was on how residents help people living without shelter by putting them in touch with local resources. I think if you're in a position to, to speak to someone who's in crisis and, and, and 
um, experiencing homelessness, helping them call the coordinated entry hotline. Um, you know, I, I was talking to a woman um, who was near the bridge building, the Confluence Health building, um, uh, visiting my dad, and I. She asked us for cigarettes, and I asked her what she needed, and I talked to her a little bit, tried to get her to let me call the hotline for her. Like you can do that. There's also the hotline. The intake is also virtual, so you could help them. I've done that a number of times. I have a phone, and you might not have a phone, but I do. I can help you get connected. Um, so if you're in that position, that that's one thing you can do. But I think the the biggest thing, and it's free because it's, it's up here, it's just to, to remember to think about this issue with kindness and, and with humanity. A safe park doesn't solve all of the problems. Uh, a mental health facility, if we were to be able to get that up and going, wouldn't solve all of the problems. Pallet shelters aren't going to solve all of it, but we do know, I think we do know, that we need a little bit, or a lot of it, of all of those things. We lost one in East Wenatchee. We had a program in East Wenatchee where they were serving 50 to 70 people a day just to come in and hang out for the day and get, get off the streets, get out of the weather, um, have a place maybe to, to come in and take a shower, uh, make a phone call, you know, those types of things. And, and we're losing some services. We need to gain some of those things back. It, it's not easy, so I think to stay involved um, and uh, support your elected officials the best that you can. They're trying to make really difficult decisions uh, and trying, but this, <laughs> 10 years ago when I became mayor, if you said that I would be doing this today, I would have thought you were uh, crazy. But you also can't absurd your responsibility because this is the problem of the day. And you can't say, well, I wasn't elected to do this. I wasn't elected to do, we're just, we're doing it the best we can, just like all of you are. So just support us the best you can. And uh, that goes a long way as we're trying to make, make these really difficult decisions. Let's take a look now at your north central Washington weather forecast. Hope your midweek Wednesday was a good one. We had a day just about like yesterday, low cloud deck, kind of dreary, calm and just downright cold out there. 31 our high temperature this afternoon. Once again, well below where we should be. 43 is now our normal high for this time of year. Our record high, 56 degrees, and that was set back in 2010. We started off at 28 and we warmed up a whole three degrees this afternoon. 31 is our overnight low normal temperature and 17 our record cold and that was set in 2014. Sunrise 707 this morning and the sun set this afternoon at 424. Taking a look now at your Thursday weather. It will be a little bit of a change tomorrow. I think we'll see a little bit more sunshine, warmer temperatures and some breezy conditions. 40 for Moses Lake and Afreda. 39 for Quincy, 38 in Wenatchee, and then mid to upper 30s from Leavenworth, Kashmir, up into Eniat, and also for Chelan tomorrow. Taking a look at what we can expect tonight, we will see overnight flurries, a possibility, and boy, very isolated and widely scattered in nature. That's because of this storm system that's dropping down through Montana. Just might catch some of us overnight tonight. For Thursday, maybe a morning flake or two giving way to mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon, but look at these bare, uh, isol uh, pressure gradient is very tightly packed and that'll kick up those winds for Thursday, upper 30s for high temperatures. As we get into Friday, sunshine will return, but so will those cool temperatures. We're talking highs on Friday, only once again in the mid 30s. For Saturday, high pressure stays anchored, oh, just west of uh, Wyoming into southern Idaho, and that will once again trap all of that cooler air our direction direction, unseasonably cool for Saturday, mid 30s for highs. By Sunday, things begin to change. Our high pressure shifts a little bit to the east and that allows an area of low pressure to kind of push in, bringing some increasing clouds Sunday with high temperatures in the mid 30s. And then for Monday, here is that next storm system and it's packing a pretty good punch as it moves into the Pacific Northwest. Not much for activity during the day, but this is in our evening hours as this storm system progresses.
progresses and boy it will continue to do so on Tuesday. Morning commute will be a wet one on Tuesday, mostly cloudy in the afternoon then. High temperatures on Tuesday into the upper 30s. So it looks like some unsettled weather as we get you into your holiday week. Overnight tonight we'll expect 24 degrees for a low. 38 tomorrow, very slight chance of a flurry. It will be warmer and breezy. Sunny and cool then for both Friday and Saturday. High temperatures in the mid 30s. We'll stay that way on Sunday with 36 degrees. And then some precipitation into the forecast Monday night into Tuesday morning. Mid 30s for Monday and upper 30s as we get into Tuesday. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. Washington State got off to a slow start and could never find their footing in a 70-59 loss to Prairie View A&M in men's college basketball last night. The TJ Bama led the way for the Cougars with 16 points as WSU lost for the second straight game. Coach Kyle Smith says he knew it would be a tough trip to Prairie View. We knew it was going to be a really tough challenge being on the road second night with the a team that um, doesn't get a lot of opportunities like this, and they knew they'd take advantage of it, and they played really hard and uh, really outcompeted us. I uh, can't put it any other way. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you tip your hat to them, but I thought we should have a little more fight in us, but uh, we got humbled tonight. DJ Rodman was a late uh, scratch due to an illness. Coach Smith says that forced him to change the lineup and get more playing time to younger players. I don't know. We have to maybe look at who we're, what, how we're starting, who we're starting a little bit, um, just to get the right thing. But uh, we're still uh, new to each other a little bit, and um, you know, we we had some for two scrimmages at Texas State. I think we probably a little full of ourselves, or at least we got exposed in these last two games, and we got a we got a tough schedule, so we're going to have to regroup and get better. Washington State's back in Spokane on Monday to face Eastern Washington. The Gonzaga women improved to 3-0 with a 66-64 win over Wyoming. Yvonne Ejim scored inside the paint with 10 seconds left. To give the Bulldogs the victory, Ejim led the way with a career-high 26 points. Gonzaga will head for the Bahamas on Saturday to face Haley Van Lith and the Louisville Cardinals. Well, the Wenatchee Wild are back on the ice tonight against Salmon Arm at Town Toyota Center. Silverbacks are third in the interior division of the BCHL at 11-5-0-1. Voice of the Wild Austin Drade says Salmon Arm has reached across the country to find some of their talent. Salmon Arm has a lot of guys from uh, uh, some of the eastern prep schools that uh, they've got connections with uh, out east. Thayer Academy, uh, uh, Berkshire School, uh, some of the ones that... Uh, you may not have heard of if you're not looking for them, but uh, once you start following a few teams, they'll uh, they'll pop up every now and then. So a lot of talent on uh, on the Salmon Arm Silverbacks roster. They'll come in on Wednesday night, Faith and Family Night, Hockey Bingo uh, play along with the with the game and uh, bring a book drive or bring a book for uh, the book drive and we'll get you a ticket for a future home game. It's all happening tonight. Dropping the puck at 6.05. Faith and family at 91 information or you want tickets, you can find that online at WenatcheeWildHockey.com. Well, the Wenatchee girls bowling team is off to a 1-0 start in league play after a win yesterday. Panthers top Sunnyside at Eastmont Lane's 1,850 pins to 1,173. 
Top rollers for Wenatchee were Sophia Johnson with a 187, Charlene Campbell with a 191, and Ava Porter with a 192. Congratulations, ladies. I think my best bowling score ever was like a 170, something like that. Well, the Seahawks are enjoying a bye week after a long trip to Munich last weekend. Despite falling to Tampa Bay, Seattle still leads the NFC West by a half game over San Francisco. Coach Pete Carroll says the bye comes at a good time to allow players to think about the season and get healthy. Because when you take a step back, you can perspectives can grow, you know, and then we can see things a little more clearly, and and the players will understand stuff. And for the young players, I, mean, I think uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, we may be able to see him make a jump here in, in these, this little break that we have, just because once you get away from it. You can see the uh, you know a little more clearly, um, so that's one part of it. Uh, we're we go into this by fairly healthy, and so that means we can come out of it even better. And so that's that's a big, uh, it could be a big boost to us as we we, as other teams continue to struggle to you know to stay healthy and all that. So hopefully we can make that come to life, and it just helps it, it helps us in all ways. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get clearer and and we'll come back fresh and ready to go. With a 6-4 and four record, Coach Carroll says they're in good position to make a push over the final seven games to win the NFC West. Okay, we've positioned ourselves here, and we, and we all know that we've, we're here, but we're not nearly as good as we could be. And, uh, you know, let's recommit as we come back uh, to really go for it because uh, we, we have enough firepower, we have enough health, um, we're growing as a, as a team coming together uh, that can really take advantage of a first half positioning, you know, and, and we'll see where we wind up with the Niners, you know, after this week. But uh, everything's ahead of us, and we we are in control of everything, and so that's all we could ever ask for. Whether you you won, you're eight and zero, or nine and zero, or ten and zero, or you're you know you're on top in, in our division. Winning the division is a huge is a huge goal for us, and it is the only really goal that we deal with in trying to own the West, and and uh, so we'll we'll go about that by coming back with a really firm commitment and everybody on. In feeling good and, and excited about it. This is a good, good mentality we have right now. Even though we had to give up a game right there, uh, we we're, we come out of it okay. Seattle's next game will be in a couple of Sundays at home against the struggling Las Vegas Raiders. That'll be at Lumen Field. Uh, just a reminder that our sports season for the winter gets underway here in just a few Saturdays. On December 2nd, we'll be at Wenatchee High School for a doubleheader with basketball here on the NCW Life Channel. We've got the Wenatchee Panthers, Eastmont Wildcats covered for boys and girls basketball. We also have some wrestling on tap for you. Uh, if you'd like to find out more, head to our website at ncwlife.com. Just click on sports and you'll see our rundown of the entire winter sports broadcast season. Now, speaking of which, uh, we uh, hire people to come and run camera for us and things like that. And if you're interested in being part of behind the scenes here at the NCW Life Channel, you're welcome to get a hold of me. I, uh, you, my email, eric at ncwlife.com. That's eric, E-R-I-C, at ncwlife.com. Send me an email. Tell me that you're interested and we might be able to hook you up behind a camera. Well, it doesn't work like that, but <laughs> we'd love to uh, get you out there and get you uh, some uh, some fun Friday nights, Saturday nights, that type of thing uh, during the high school basketball season coming up here over the winter months. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Coots for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? On the next edition of Wake Up on Anchi Valley, we're talking to two of the major cast members of SpongeBob SquarePants. Introduce yourself. I'm Savannah Webb, and I play Pearl. I'm Gabe Kimmel, and I play Plankton. It is the all-district musical. You got first graders, you got seniors in high school, and everything in between. It is a party, and there's a lot of talented kids in the theater world in this valley. You're going to meet a couple of them on the next edition of Wake Up on Anchi Valley. Back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel.
The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today. Watch Vibrant Living, brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Find out about programs and activities for ages 50 and over, and meet amazing seniors who contribute to our community. New episodes Sundays at 1.30 p.m., replayed throughout the week on the NCW Life Channel. 